I'm Geraldine. Believe you expect me. No, I'm expecting our new vicar. Unless, of course, you are the new vicar and they've landed us with a woman as <laughs> some sort of insane joke. <laughs> Oh, dear. For the majority of us, the idea of a woman leading a church service is no big shock. The hit sitcom The Vicar of Dibley highlighted the challenges faced by women in the church. Since 1994, the Church of England has allowed female priests, and now one in five Anglican ministers is a woman. A time where the figure is equal is a long way off. But the problem is a lot more complicated. A 2008 study suggested that since 1989 in England, Christian churches have lost over one million female worshippers, partly due to a perception that Christianity is not female-friendly. Despite a similar number of men and women being ordained each year, male priests are much more likely to be given a paid position. Up until now, the Church of England hasn't allowed women to reach the higher ranks of the Church. The General Synod, the governing body of the Church of England, will vote in July on proposals to allow women to be ordained as bishops. Reverend Rose Hudson Wilkin is the Vicar of Hackney and Chaplain to the House of Commons. She was one of the first women priests in 1994 and is tipped to become one of the first female bishops. But she is not happy with the overall mood in the church about the subject. It feels as if it's begrudging. It does feel like that. And that's very uncomfortable. And I certainly would not want to even think of women bishops in a context where it is uh, being done OK, we might just let you become a bishop, but there are all these strings attached. You know, you won't be able to do X or Y or Z. No, absolutely not. We either have women bishops or we don't. The majority of the population is in support of female bishops. A YouGov survey in July 2010 found that 63% of those asked were in favour and only 10% against, while the remaining 27% expressed no opinion. The draft legislation has been approved by 42 of the church's 44 dioceses, but there are still some who aren't in favour. Father John Custer is a member of Forward in Faith, a movement who believe in a more traditional Anglo-Catholic strand of Christianity. He is against women becoming bishops. Well, in, in conscience, I do not believe that I could support the ordination of women as bishops because I don't think that it is within the authority of the Church of England to strike out or innovate a new doctrine like that. I think it undermines our understanding of what the role of bishop and orders are in the church. It's not just a matter of being daring, it's also being faithful and obedient to the faith as we've received it. But in an ideal world, in your eyes, all the bishops would be male? Well, it's more than an ideal world because that makes it sound like it's just mere opinion, but um, that would that is by far clearly within the tradition of the church. The Archbishop of Canterbury, Dr Rowan Williams, proposed a compromise where parishes would be able to appoint an alternative male bishop underneath any woman in the role. The House of Bishops could still tweak this legislation before it reaches final approval, but Reverend Hudson Wilkin believes this arrangement would still undermine women. I think it is silly. What I hear people saying is, in effect, just as they did back then when we were trying to have apartheid abolished, there would be those bobbing up and down saying, oh yes, it's a good idea for us to abolish apartheid, but actually I still really only want to travel in the all-white bus. And that's what is happening. People are saying, oh yes, we think it's okay for the church to have women priests, but as long as it's not in my backyard. The issue of gender inequality is not exclusive to Christianity. Islam is Britain's second most followed religion with over one and a half million worshippers. Most sections of the religion segregate men and women and encourage women to wear a veil over their heads. Dr Taj Hage looks at Islam from a more liberal viewpoint. Islam as a religion is not sexist, Muslims are sexist. And I think we need to understand the distinction between what the faith says and what Muslims um, uh, practice. The, the, the burqa and the niqab, the face veil, I call it face mask, yeah. is not even mentioned in the Quran. It is totally uh, a foreign custom. Islam only says that men and women in public should be modest with each other. As you are dressed there, you are modest, and I'm dressed here, I'm modest. Dr. Hage invited the first woman to lead Friday prayers in the UK back in 2008. He says that the biggest opponents to this were women themselves. The Prophet Muhammad himself allowed a woman to lead the mixed gender prayers. While Islam was very progressive and revolutionary when it first came along, slowly those rights were whittled away by, by, by patriarchal 
uh, priesthood that has uh, now confined women and made them into some form of subjugated second-class citizens in the Muslim community. There's no logic about it that an idiot man should lead the prayers and a brilliant Nobel Prize winning, winning uh, uh, female academic cannot. Back in the Anglican community, churches in other countries have had female bishops since 1988. Christina Rees has been campaigning for the ordination of women for over 20 years and believes the Church of England's actions could bring bigger change to worldwide Christianity. What we really need is for the culture of the Church of England to change, and not just for women, but across a number of issues. Once we take this big step and include women as bishops, it will, I think, allow and give huge energy to the Roman Catholic Church and I think we'll see significant changes in their church down the line because they also want women priests and they also want their priests to be able to marry. So I think it will have a, a significant effect on the worldwide Catholic, that is the universal Christian church. General Synod will meet in York this summer for the final vote on this issue. For it to pass two thirds of each house, the bishops, the clergy and the lay people must accept the change in law. It will then go to Parliament for final approval. If accepted, we could see the first female bishops in the Church of England by 2014.